Good evening and welcome to Key Radio Live. We have a very, very special episode for y'all today because I have two co-hosts who are some of the founders of Keyverse here. So I'm our back re- from the dead. <laughs> our <laughs> returning regular host, Utori, is here, and Platy, who I don't think has been on the podcast with me. You have only ever filled in for me. Isn't that right? I have been in a, I think it was the rewrite podcast, but that didn't end up getting posted. That's right. Yes. So. Yeah. One episode. The rewrite podcast was a pain to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it is it bad for me to say that I've actually not kept up with the podcast episodes in recent memory? I'm sorry. I mean, I'm a, you're a busy I'm a person. Sham. Yeah, I'm a sham. you're not a sham. Life it, it's is literally no, nothing. Not. A, it's literally nothing against you guys. It's literally so for context as to wh- why I've fallen off the face of the earth since it's been a while. I've gone through a pretty hellish semester of college. Um, or one that potentially leaves me in a position where I might not be able to afford college pretty soon. That's lovely. I'm needing to find another job because teaching's not working out. Got an interview tomorrow. Here's the hoping. Good luck. Okay. And um, due to recent world events that I don't want to mention, I've been on an anxious roller coaster of emotions for the past, like, four or five months like it's a kind of a mess so yeah i've i'm here though now and i'm kind of chilling I don't, I don't know like i'm oddly calm tonight <laughs> yeah it's good stuff we'll we'll party like it's 2020 because we're gonna talk about kami <laughs> tonight and yes. this is i i was mentioning this a little bit in pre-show this was kind of the anime that brought the three of us together so it's only, or at least me to the two of you. You two knew each other long before, but yes. <laughs> or a lot of the older key community apart. Yeah, it's kind of true, but it's it's only fitting that you two were the ones to join me for this one. No, you two are the only other. T- oh wait, no, Falcon Ted. So we are like one of four yeah. people I know that actually really liked Kamisama. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's it's a. You know, people joke it's a depress it's depressing to be a Harmonia fan. I'll argue it's depressing to be a Kamisama fan. Yeah, cuz honestly, at least with Harmonia, a lot of people just didn't read it or experience it, so it's they don't even talk about it. But when Kamisama or they'll go, them, it wasn't great, but it also wasn't bad. There are people who yeah, act like Kamisama killed their parents. Yes. Like that is Jeez. That that it's is exactly true, though. Why. I did a little review in the server and I called it Kamisama is a gem, y'all are just mean because yeah. too many people crap it's on it. Really great name. For like the so a full disclaimer though, um I am not responsible for anyone saying that y'all are just mean. I understand that there's a lot of issues with Kamisama. In fact, that's the reason I'm here. I'm here to be sort of the equalizer, but um you know, y- it kind of feels like the Star Wars community. Please just listen to us be positive about it. It would it would be great. Like I get yeah. it. Like you don't like it, but it's okay. It's okay. We get it. Like, but this there is, is stuff also, to like. This is also just because a lot of the Keyverse community has yet to watch it because they were either turned off by the um by the reviews or turned off by the first episode. And this is basically mm-hmm. give this thing a chance. You might enjoy it. Well, exactly. Well, Said Kamisama just killed his potential. So did Angel Beats and Charlotte. Just saying. Yeah. Unfortunately, the anime only anime just kind of set themselves up for failure. I think by having such a rigid need to be a specific number of episodes. And thanks, Aniplex. Be- <laughs> I don't want to see another key PA works collab. I'm just. I don't honest. want to see another key Aniplex collaboration because that's what it really was. Aniplex is horrible with giving anime original stuff just the time it needs. Yep. He still uses Angel Beats for marketing. Yeah, but then they also don't give the fans what they actually want. When's the last time we got a good Angel Beats piece of content outside of those two Pachinko songs? Uh, it was first beat, and that was almost uh, seven years ago. Yeah. Rest in peace. Please do not divide Angel Beats in six. Please don't. <laughs> you made me as disappointed. Okay, question. I have not kept up with Kaginato. Please tell me that Kaginato has at least referenced first beat. 
Have they brought the Have they brought up the elephant in the room? I haven't no. been watching com- Cooking Battles. No, they so haven't. Apparently, apparently, they haven't. Dang. Okay, I want them to joke about it. At least confirm its cancellation. Like, yeah, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> Please, <laughs> the Angel Beats fans deserve closure. I yeah. I don't uh, even know. Shiawase Spirals asking if Charlotte or Kami-sama will make it into Kaginato. I just want to say they probably I want them to. Just they because probably of the fact will. That they still haven't included Summer Pockets or anything from like beyond Angel Beats in, so I still think they have plenty of characters to bring in for a third yeah. season. For so season three, I'm- my predictions are they're going to do... so. Because we have all the five main visual novels and then Angel Beats. But Angel Beats was such a gargantuan cast, it was hard to bring in. I think Charlotte will Charlotte and Kami-sama will be next, along with maybe Summer Pockets. Yeah. And then after that, they'll probably bring in the rest of the kinetic novel casts, like sure. Harmonia, etc. Yeah. Unfortunately, Harmonia is actually probably the one that's least likely because no one remembers its existence. Um, that would make a good joke for them to slide in there, though. Just have yeah. a 20-second appearance, if even. I, I, I actually have come around on Harmonia quite a bit to the point where I uh, reread it um, last month again, which is weird for me because... Whenever I first read it, I never read it again until 2021, and then this year I've read it twice. Um, wow. So, I, I mean, I'm not like I'm not gonna go. Harmonia did nothing wrong. It's actually <laughs> good, but I will say Harmonia is pretty okay. Yeah, and I at the moment, but I would say it still falls true with Kamisama with that as well. It's just. Sometimes things get better on a rewatch, so maybe some people who really didn't like it are prepared for things to go the way they do, so maybe you can try to see it with new light. Right. If, yeah. Hopefully and that's, can convince you to do that. Yeah, okay, and that, that'll bring us that'll bring us back in um after wait i I need i need to go on the rabbit hole for first beat because this is a rant (laughs) that i need to get out on podcast all right all right okay the game that key wants us to forget about domi for whatever reason it was pretty success it was pretty successful but and really pricey to make why waste so much money and potential here's the reason and he and i can almost guarantee you this is what happened angel beats first beat was finished before Jin Maeda had the health condition that put him on hold for like a solid year. And while they could have had someone other than Maeda write a bunch of the other routes, um, Key was in a weird position after First Beat where they wanted to get out of Angel Beat Shadow because that was the only work up until that point that was considered a financial success um, post rewrite because angel beats and rewrite came out at around the same time and angel beats ended up being more successful than rewrite on a larger scale but they wanted to escape that because the key brand was starting to become less key and more angel beats so they decided well let's try to figure out let's figure out how we can one person in the audience understood that reference so pretty much key went how do we make something new that'll bring the key brand back in and maybe once Maeda's back we can or back to writing condition we can get him to finish second beat thing is is by the time summer pockets was well into development and harmonia was out i think no one really wanted to return to second beat because the thing is a visual novel to the scale of what second beat was there were confirmed at least 15 character routes that were gonna happen there was no way they were gonna do it like Let's be real. There was, was no way they were feasibly going to do it. They bit off more than they could chew. So yeah. why waste the money and potential? I mean, I don't see it as a waste because what we got was really good. It's just, it's I'm sad. Finished. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do I wish that it got more? But I, I just wish it happened all at once. Honestly. Bless. Thank you. I'm assuming that was a sneeze. <laughs> yes, it was. Sorry. I heard, no, I heard Inari that. Pond. That's all I heard. Oh my god, stop. Pond! <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm 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 over it today. Uh right. back to Kami Sama though. I've talked about its big, 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 big sister way too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So there there are really two big issues why people don't watch this that we need to address. One we've already kind of addressed, which is the reception, and the other is the first episode. 
I'm yeah. going I like to say I, I get the criticisms with it, and I just do not agree with them. Like You guys can talk about the first episode before I do, because that is my biggest critique to Kami-sama. Sure. But I will let you guys talk about it. Platy, you first, because... I there, think you, I'm you the most about it middle more ground. Deeply. Yeah, I, th I think I might be the most middle ground on the first episode. Uh -huh. I definitely, like, first time I watched it, I really liked it. I thought that the way Hina got introduced just set her up to be exactly what she was through a good majority of really the episode. Extra. That's what like, she is. Like, yeah, she's and, just freaking extra. <laughs> like, and it just to me, she blended right in with the way that certain key heroines behave. Like, oh, I don't yeah. know. I, I've I have an attachment to gremlin type characters, and Hina is a gremlin. And oh, most definitely. Just the very vibrancy of her design struck me a lot in that first one and yes it kind of went from 0 to 180 pretty fast yep but i don't know i just thought it went pretty well because she seemed like a very fast paced and chaotic person and she just immediately pulls everything in her sight into her whirlwind and you kind of it's can't help but get wrapped up in that between her and yota i think because yota is relatively normal like mm -hmm. that's kind of his thing is that he's he, he's ordinary you know he's very friendly he's a nice guy but that's kind of all he is for a good while in the series and it it's a nice contrast with him versus someone like Hina who is extremely energetic. Now, mm -hmm. the biggest criticism with episode one is that there's too much shit happening. There are too many plot threads happening in one episode that no one knows what to focus on. And I get that. It's hard to follow. I, but that's who I Hina is. That. Like, I, Yeah, I don't know. I think I just... So Sometimes I work better with fast pace. So for me, I just got caught right up into it and I didn't even register that it was too much. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably going to be the most negative I get about Kami-sama because admittedly, I do think that it is the second worst first episode from a key anime. It the is being Charlotte's. I did not like Charlotte's opening episode. Oh, well, we'll get there another day. <laughs> I can spend a whole series of podcasts talking about why that episode is good, but later, later, later. I don't, I, I will say, it is a better introduction to Charlotte than Kami Samus is, and here's my main reason why. Because there's so much stuff going on, the end of the world talk sort of just gets swept up in the midst of it and the thing is with Hina is because it is such a vital part of her character sure you can play it off as her like oh she's just gone to the wind like she doesn't care that the world's ending in 30 days but the thing is I didn't feel that because the direction was very haphazardly put together you had moments where all music stopped and she was just like the world's ending in 30 days and then you had just like right after that like it was a very serious moment then all of a sudden it was like okay back to the goofs but it wasn't like it wasn't like Hina going, ha ha ha, yeah, that's that's gotta be a joke, right? Like very funny, ha ha. It was more just like the the entire episode was bipolar in a sense, and it was very hard to follow. Like I and had I a lot think of that's the intention. Doesn't make it, it fun too. to watch. Doesn't make yes. it fun to watch. <laughs> it was fun for me. I, I did not. yeah. It is the episode I skip whenever I do a Kamisama rewatch just Oof. because it exhausts me to watch it. And yeah. I think it's because, and this is my theory for most of the Kamisama formula, there is a formula to that Kamisama follows. It's very similar to the key formula. Most key's common routes, their day-by-day -day activities are one plot thread that gets closed by the end of the day, whether that be one joke, one gag, one whatever. And then the reason, the way you know that you're heading towards a route is whenever the plot thread starts getting spread out over the course of a week, maybe a month. Sure. Um, Kamisama does something similar in the sense that come episode two, you have one focus, and that is 
get a film made. There is nothing else to focus on in episode one outside of a brief scene with Hirato. By the time episode three hits, well, yes, yet again, another one thing to focus on. It's the ramen shop. Episode four, that one was the Mahjong one, yes. Yep. Um, yep. It's, it's just Mahjong. Come episode five, it is our first serious episode, but once again, the plot thread is self-contained within the episode. With, Beautiful with episode. Nami and her dad, yeah. But it is self-contained, self-isolated. By part, but the thing is, we start seeing in episode six the beginnings of a continuous plot thread. And what I mean by this is the fact that episode six is the start where we get to see more of Hirato. Then come episode seven, it starts out with more lore heavy stuff. We start rolling out of that daily life into an overarching arc with Hirato and Hina going into this conspiracy. And I like that because that is the key formula to a T in the sense that every episode I knew I was going to see a beginning and end, but by the time we stopped getting that, I knew, oh, stuff's about to hit the fan. Sure. Mm -hmm. What The issue with episode one is it is three plot threads at a time, and unfortunately, the jokes don't have long enough to stick, And which is weird for Maeda because Maeda loves his repetition humor. It's why I argue that the – Episodes two to six are fantastic because he had a full episode to ram a joke into the ground. Episode one didn't really have that. The only joke that was really like close to getting rammed into the ground was Hina freaking out over Narukami's name. Other than that, yeah. you had no time for any of the gags to really sit and land. Every episode after that point had a gag that it had time to sit, which I think why a lot of people think the first half of the show is the strongest half because – it's not going places. It is literally just the gag, laugh, funny. It's very enjoyable that's, to watch. That's summer vacation, though, you know? And that's yeah. kind of what this series is supposed to be. Like, I would argue here, of the three anime originals, definitely, but even, like, top of key level, the slice of life matters here more than most. Yes. Oh, yeah, because it, the issue... Well, because by the time you reach the end of Kamisama, you reach a point where you're like deprived of the slice of life. So the episode after you feel your well, saddest, we're you end not up getting talk details of the ending, but we'll be vague here. Like but yeah. I'm talking episode nine and ten. After episode yeah. nine, we were all very depressed because the slice of life was kind of over, but the series sort of emphasized it with Hirato coming and basically filling in that slice of life role again. And that mm -hmm. was a really cool moment, in my opinion, because it Definitely. was like, hey, we can keep moving forward. But the thing is, those moments started becoming more compressed. And this is where I think Kamisama could have actually done better by having 13 episodes compared to 12. If it had one more episode, I think a lot of the pacing issues in the second half that people complain about would be non-existent. Yeah, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves with the pacing issues because that yeah. is something worth mentioning. But I I still am of the opinion here that okay, like the the running gag in episode one is that is is that Hina is kind of bipolar and can't focus on any one thing for very long. So then no one knows whether to take the end of the world thing seriously until you see the countdown. It's the first time, like, at the very end of the episode, right as they're transitioning into the ED. It's the first time in that episode we see the end of the world talk from come from a source other than Hina, and it's like, oh shit, maybe this is actually, maybe the world's actually going to end in 30 days. And my, I, don't know, I thought my, that was really cool. My thesis on the first episode of Kamisama was that they made Hina border, for people who can't keep track of Hina, they made her borderline unbearable, and most of her she redeemable- Spiral says, I wanted to throw Hina at a wall. <laughs> I, I I get it because <laughs> if you don't like that style of humor, you're not going to like Hina as a character, especially in episode yeah. one, because that is where she is at her peak craziness. Yes. Thing is, I will definitely what, second that. Here's how I would change episode one. You have the opening scene with Hina at the basketball court, but then you have the scene where Hina goes to the library and they see Izanami and it's revealed that she likes basketball or baseball. 
sure. Then you have the entire episode. That's the only gag is that it's Yoda trying to get good at baseball and then have the end gag be that he fails and it's really funny. That's how you do it and it would still fit in with the pacing of the other episodes and it would still give a good introduction because there's a lot of funny things you could have with Hina from baseball. You'd have to redo some of the scenes that prove her omniscience though because you had the whole thing where she predicts the winners of the horse race. Well, yeah, but you I could would easily really important. Yeah, but you can add a scene in baseball where she basically goes, "Oh, I know you're gonna throw a curveball here," and Yoda tries his hardest not to, but then he still throws a curveball. There's sure. ways okay. of doing that. Like there are ways of baseball is an open playing field. Maeda has proven he knows how to write baseball. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Maeda anyone's talk. going to argue that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do want to just have a little bit more defense on the way episode one works, just from perspective of people who have already watched everything and kind of getting into Hina as a whole. She was basically, I don't know where Hina was before she met Yota. So this very well could have been the very first person who actually paid her any form of attention. And when you have somebody who has a very childlike like mentality like Hina, they kind of go full feral mode trying to make friends and do whatever they can to please that person or to prove themselves. So I do think part of it is Hina just went so hardball into everything because she didn't know how to regulate. And then once she realized, oh, this task is a lot harder than it actually seems, maybe I should back off a bit. And she kind of, things take a bit slower because she kind of normalizes and realizes the way people interact with each other. Yeah. For the record, I I'm largely paying devil, playing devil's advocate when it comes to episode yeah. one. Because while I don't personally enjoy watching it, I can understand its merit. And if you like episode one, you like episode one. There's no reason to not to. It's just not yeah. something I rewatch because the thing is, the most important part of episode one, and it is the scene I really like, is the scene where Yoda calls home and it's like, hey, mom, there's this girl and she's got like the nun outfit. And then it's like, that was okay, a really cool like scene bring her home it the, the moment where we like these parents know more than they let on yeah yep. i will say something about the countdown and this is something more about like in general for kami sama i think people misunderstood the show a lot especially with the countdown. Oh, yeah because like, yeah. i think that countdown is not representative really of the end of the world but the childlike mentality of like it feels like the world's gonna end when summer like vacation, summer is, vacation over. is over exactly like it is literally that counting down the days oh my gosh i need to make the most out of this time because i know i'm gonna be in nine months of school before this or in hina's case she was sort of self-aware of the fate she was gonna be befallen in 30 days so yeah. I really do think that it was less representative of the world ending, but rather that bl the world they were currently in, that blissful, just it's summer vacation, do whatever we want, the world is our oyster type of mentality. And if you think about it that way, Kami-sama is just a brilliant story about a summer vacation. I mean, you see that all of the wacky stuff they do is kind of reminiscent of the crazy stuff you can get into in summer vacation. Mm -hmm. you know? Like the... Like, the I'm making movies. It's just the movie is the big one, definitely. But the the ramen shop episode in particular, like a lot of people, it, it say that it's the most forgettable one. Um, I don't agree, but that's partially because I think Hikari is really cute. Um, but even just the fact that Yota is freaking crazy in that episode, like we get yeah. to see his crazy side when he's trying to put this thing back together and like from the last two episodes and also his interactions with Ashura we know that's not how he normally acts mm -hmm. so how it brings that out of him is I think just brilliant of and really reminiscent of his mentality and that he's just having fun you know, I will exactly. say one part of Kami-sama that gets a lot of hate that I do think is ever so slightly unfair is both the MC 
and how Hina is treated during the second half. I'll get into the MC first, though, because I'm very heated about how Hina is treated in the second half by most fans. I'm, I'm, he I'm heated about how the MC is treated overall. Like, I think people complaining about Yoda being a very ordinary and forgettable MC makes them forget the point of Yoda in general. The reason why Yoda is the perfect main character for Kamisama is because he is a nobody. You can't have a somebody in the and role of just Yoda a in nobody, this case. An immature nobody. An yep. immature nobody that is supposed to be sort of forgettable because it makes his growth by the end and him finding his goal all the better. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Yoda has no goal for himself. That you, From the start of the series, his goals are all based off of a crush. Somebody yeah. he likes, he just wants to chase that dopamine. He has no goal for his life outside of that. He's not thinking about whether or not that doesn't work out and stuff. But part of this summer vacation that changed him is the fact that he figured out what he cared about most. And he wanted to form that family. And I find that brilliant that by the end of the story, he found his goal. But he had to be a nobody at the start for that to happen. You can't – it's almost like for me – it's like how I treated Riki and Little Busters. I used to call Riki the absolutely the absolute one dimensional protagonist. Like I did not like Riki yeah. first um, starting Little Busters, but by yeah. the end of it, I just I fell in love with Riki and I fell in love with Yoda. One of my favorite scenes in Yoda is that scene in one of the last episodes where he's sitting on the bench, absolutely dejected, feeling like he's I worth love nothing. That scene so much. And it's very quintessentially key because everyone that he considers part of his family comes in to go, hey, no, you're more than what you're giving yourself credit for. And you're mm -hmm. the only one that would ever be able to do this. So I mean, heck, even Hirato even saw and motivation. You know? I mean, heck, even Hirato saw it. He was moved by what Yoda was trying to do. Yeah. Uh, Man Pig says, I understand that, but there's a difference between a good point and making it enjoyable in a story, which was a problem for me. When I don't get attached to a character, I don't care for their stories and struggles. I mean, that's the case in any story. I just think that I in that agree. case, it's just that yeah. Kamisama isn't for you more than it is Kamisama's a weak story. And I, I do think, think there comes a certain extent you have to separate your opinions on a character from what happens to that character. Because I feel like, yes, you can not get attached to a character, but that doesn't mean that that person's journey is not still valid and important. It's yeah, just like, not for you. I think in the case of Kamisama, there's a lot of cases where people think that the story wasn't well written, but it's less that and more that the story just might not be the target audience. Like there is a case yeah. with that. I am not the target audience for the large majority of the stories that Clan Ed tells. So for me, I'm not near as attached to Clan Ed as many other people are. Same. Um but do I think it's a bad key story? No, I would be an absolute fool to say that it's a bad key story. It defined what a key story could be for right. a large generation. So for me, Kamisama is very similar in the sense that like, I can acknowledge why people wouldn't like it, but it spoke to me. Yeah. And I think that's the case with pretty much any key. If you don't like it, it might not necessarily be all that bad. It just might not be for you. Right. I I definitely would second that. And Yota in particular, I think gets a lot more flack than he deserves for that reason. Like, Which yeah. confuses me because, I don't know, man, I feel like a lot of key main characters are pretty stale. I um, mean, you have Hairi. <laughs> <laughs> Takahara Hairi is not that interesting. I'm sorry. Well, until... <laughs> until reflection blue but yeah, yeah but like taka taka okay well here's the thing if i'm talking about key protagonists that are kind of boring yuichi's boring until the end of canon because then you get to see how much of it was just absolute misdirection on key's part riki was honestly kind of boring until refrain because then refrain makes riki a protagonist like an yeah. actually good one. Like I'm Which, sorry. To be Rick fair, is the point to him. He's yep. he like Kotaro is a protagonist who thinks he's a side character. Otanashi is absolutely a blank slate protagonist. 
Otonashi is my least favorite key protagonist. Like, bar none. Omaya is a blank slate protagonist throughout half of Clan Ad and an absolutely fantastic character through the other half. I Ad think he's an asshole in half of Clan Ad and a great guy in the other half. I don't I just, think he's a blank slate. I just think he's inconsistent. Like, Yota has a... And, like, to be fair, it's a linear medium. So he has it a little easier than Tomoya. And there's mm -hmm. also only one writer in Kamisama. But Yota has a really, really well-done progression. I will also give credit to Harmonia, because I could say Ray is an absolute blank slate of a protagonist, but then that's me completely misunderstanding the point of Ray as a character, because Ray is meant to be a boring protagonist. Oh, he's incredibly boring. He is my least favorite, and that will never change. I'm Ray. sorry. I hate Ray. I'm sorry. I get it, but <laughs> like that's the point. That's the point. You know, you can't yeah. deny that he was supposed to be an absolute nobody. Like he was a black yeah. And this is where I understand what Man Pig is saying because, like, if, if the character didn't appeal to me, so I found it hard to get invested in his story. So I think I feel about Ray the way Man Pig feels about Yoda. Mm -hmm. Which makes me understand that point of view a little more. I completely so, understand it because for yeah. me, it's a similar situation with me and um, Yuichi throughout a lot of canon. Sure. I did not like canon on my first watch through because I did not like Yuichi, so why should I care? But on a rewatch, whenever I got the perspective on Yuichi and also Ayu and everyone else, I liked it a lot more. I appreciated it. Heck, sure. one, going all the way back to tactics, I don't care about Kohei. So, like, one was really hard to relate to for me yeah. until I got full perspective on him. Yeah. yeah. Still doesn't so, excuse some of the stuff he does, though. <laughs> agreed. So, yeah, th that's the thing. Yota is, if you're not into him, totally fair try and empathize with him you are likely to get a lot more out of it if you if you give the attempt to give him the time of day Tommy so. is a story that gets better if instead of trying to relate to the protagonists yourself you try to put the protagonists in your shoes like how would you feel in a situation where someone that yoda loved as much as he loved hina if you were in that similar situation, because in that case, I think it makes Kamisama a lot more relatable if you don't immediately relate to it. Unfortunately, sure. due to recent events, I relate a lot to the current events of Kamisama, which I will get to. Same. I'm not going to get super per personal, but yeah, it, it is something where going through it makes you just it, it, it does make you relate to Yoda a lot more. I will say, on this case, I want to talk about Hirato because he's an underrated character in Kamisama, and I Best don't mean boy. I, I, I do think he gets so overlooked so much because thematically he's brilliant. He is a character that is bred off of nothing but false success and everything about true failure. He as a character, his whole point is that he is so scared of failing due to how he is up brought that he sort of puts on this front because he wants so desperately to be successful. And I think that's a brilliant antagonist for the story of Kamisama because if it, in the case of just comparing I, Hirato to Yoda- I would have loved Yoda, an entire episode dedicated to his backstory. I do think it was a little rushed. He got an I, entire. He got basically an entire episode. He, I mean, I, I, I mean, just to the backstory, like yeah. just to what went on between him and his parents, because that is like, um, dare I say, the peak of Kamisama besides the ending is Hirotō's story. And it is one of my favorites, and I do think Hirotō is a foil for Yoda because in Hirotō's case, he was brought up to be a somebody, but his biggest fear was being a nobody. Exactly. Like he, and but in Yoda's case, he is a nobody. He has no goals, but in his actions for and what he loves, he was able to become somebody important, doing important it's research. Why they're the antithesis to each other in a way. Yeah, it's a brilliant thing, and it's why Hirato, whenever looking at Yoda, whenever they part ways by the part in the series, I find it a brilliant scene because Hirato's moved by Yoda because he sees a lot of what he couldn't be because he never had a chance to truly find someone who loved him or mm -hmm. someone he truly loved.
Yeah. So he, I I think Hirito is a very underrated character, especially in the themes I of Kami Sama and family. Yeah. Yeah. I think that wasn't emphasized enough in the anime. That will be something I would critique as I do think Hirito deserved another episode, particularly <laughs> with the rest of you while you were on your coffee break. But go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because I think that there needed to be more interaction between Yota and Hiroto for that to become particularly clear. Like, there was a yeah. lot of off screen interactions or kind of indirect ways that the two, and even him with Hina, I think there could have been more somehow. I don't know. <laughs> but so, yeah. there's my. Here, I, here's I, why I, I said one that. extra episode could fix Kamisama. And here's why. That episode, episode 10 is one of my favorite episodes in Kamisama because of how it sort of harkens back to the series Slice of Life roots. I think it should have done it for two episodes before moving the plot forward more to give Hirato time to settle into his new like, life. Into yeah. this new life. It would have made it far more impactful and would emphasize the differences between Yoda and Hirato. Because in a sense, Yoda and Hirato are both the main characters of Kamisama in very different ways. Yeah. I would like to see it's just even though it's an anime and we're we're in third person perspective here, Yota is meant to be the perspective character here. I would love to see how different the story is if Hirota was the perspective character instead. It, it would, would be, be very, very different. different. I would love it. It would, <laughs> but there would be so much to add to it. I like, think everything from a different perspective between Yota, Hina, and Hiroto would be incredible to see just because we don't see a lot of what's going on in Hina's mind. And I do think that is where some people might not be able to connect so well with her because right. you're very outside of her mind. And yeah. I don't know, it's because people, what's going on in her to. mind is kind of a spoiler, so I understand that. But for for an anime, yes. For like a visual novel version, which, by the way, I am sort of trying to mull over the idea of trying to do. Amazing. <laughs> a Kamisama um, visual novel would be great. I'm just gonna yeah put that out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Absolutely. I will probably be bugging you about that soonish. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but I do think Kamisama suffers just from being an anime con contained to 13 episodes. For me, I think it could have thrived better on 17 episodes. I two think Kamisama could have been a two core. Episodes. I think, I think a two core a would be long. too long. I think that would mess up the pacing. I think they yeah, could wait, do wait. it. I have I a defense. I have a defense. Let's for, hear the defense. Okay. What I mean by two cores, 12 episodes, 12 episodes, so 24 episodes. Sure. My reason being is we get more of the slice of life, and I do feel that it would make the – I think it would make the – I Izanami, and then in, uh, inadvertently, the um, episode six, which also had some quote unquote emotional moments, you would be able to space that out a little more. Because the thing is, what we ended up happening is we had a lot of days skipped, especially like days that like weren't shown in the show that weren't part of any specific task. Like, because there yeah. are confirmed p gaps in the episodes we see between days. It's not like, oh, we're seeing every day that could potentially do it and the episode's just skipping over parts of medial tasks. It's that we are hopping around through these 30 days. So I think... If well, because each episode is a day, basically. The countdown only counts down at the end of each episode. Yep. Yeah. So if I would... What I would really love to see, in a sense, is a 12-episode first core that ends where episode 9 begins. Or, like, ends where episode 9 currently ends, and it'd be, like, sort of a cliffhanger. Like, oh god, what's gonna happen? And then it goes straight into that second core, and that second core shows us Hirato in his new life, more exploring Hirato's mindset. Pretty much like a Little Buster's refrain style anime 
pacing where it's like it's a little bit slower on that end but it also gives us more time to see because it was a month that hiruto was hanging out with these guys which is about the same length as the first core would be it would be Hiro very cool to see more interactions with hiruto yoda and the new cast after that boring there's not enough content to fill 12 episodes with all of that i think it would have taken away too much of the main concept of Kami-sama if it were extended that much for that group I, of characters. I think if you, we had, like, let's say four episodes with the new gang and then Hirato tries to basically explain to Yoda, we also get... Because we have to remember, Yoda was there for quite a few days up at the uh, location that I shall not name. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't get to see all of it. So I would really like to see more of that because i think why a lot of people don't relate to what's going on with hina at that point is the fact that yoda seems to be taking two steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back and while that is the case i think if it had more episodes to be paced out you could just see how it works a little bit better because i think because it was crammed into three episodes there was a lot of people that are just like Oof, i would argue people I... might get more frustrated with him I was going to say that, and I think as well, a lot of it just comes down to when it comes to cases like what Hina is suffering, people in this time period still do not have patience and enough empathy to sit there and watch something like that. Yep. I think it would have suffered even more under that because people just, they can't I, handle I, that. You, Platty. And as somebody who has situations that makes it incredibly relatable for me, I would hate to see people hate on it even more because it goes on for too long. I do also think the other possible thing is bringing where this where the series sort of ends be about halfway through the next core and showing us a little bit more of life afterwards. Now, because that I would appreciate. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing is, and I think this is one of my biggest critiques of the ending and why Kamisama feels. All, kind of dissatisfying in a sense, especially if you really wanted a conclusion. Kamisama doesn't have one. It has a conclusion to the current arc, but it doesn't really have a definitive answer for what's going to happen to these characters. Yeah, there's no epilogue. There I would argue it doesn't need one. I think, I think thematically it doesn't for this arc, but I think the series would largely benefit from more closure. Mm -hmm. Because I the thing, because the thing is, you will have a lot of people that will go through that show, go end up where we end up, and go. Well, that's cool, but we still have no answers. There's no guarantee that anything will be better. So, like, it's and almost, it's almost like that nihilistic view where it's like, I want to either see that there is an end in sight, or be told that everything will be okay, which we weren't told in Kami Samo. Was like, well, maybe we don't know yet. It's hard because that's also realistic to people in that condition with Hina is again, there is no possible... You don't know birth. when the end is... You don't know if you, how it's going to go. Like, yeah, I which just... they could give you that ending, but I don't know. Somehow ending it on the blind faith. Uh, Extra Tomato asked, does Kamisama not have an OVA? I would it have expected not. them to have one at this point. Yeah. It does it's not, and I also do not think it's going to get one, considering its ratings have been very poor. It, it I mean, it yeah. is the reason why Maeda left the internet for a while. Let's see. And yes, it is the Let's... opposite problem of Harmonia, but for me, the epilogue is exactly what dragged Harmonia down an entire... Uh, point for me so <laughs> i think if kami-sama sort of had an epilogue arc even if it was four episodes it would be very cool to see what yoda's love for hina does in regards to his research and his future where even it's almost like a time if we just even if it's just a time lapse over the years okay sure like think about it this way like one episode is yoda directly after it him getting frustrated with the setbacks that he's getting from this but he decides no i'm gonna keep pushing forward because i like this we skip forward maybe five years yoda's a little bit older hina's a little bit older but she's you know she's still around there's still stuff to be done he's still doing research he's still pushing forward we get to see how these characters have evolved past their point from this supposed end to the arc and then as we keep going you know yoda gets older time moves on and um 
But I would actually like to see a sort of sad ending where maybe, yeah, this character doesn't make it, but the research still keeps going because he doesn't want anyone else to go through what happened. I think that would be a really yeah. cool thing in the sense that like it would be a really cool resolution. Like things still live on past long then and love can do crazy things. So yeah. like, I think it would be I very thematically like fitting. And it would also be like and because Kamisama is focused on family, it'd be really cool to see how these characters stuck together. Yeah, that would that would be nice to see. Don't I think Kamisama's big yeah, Kamisama is definitely something that Key wants to distance itself from. Yeah, and it, it's a bit sad. I think. And it is sad. It's very sad. I think there's a lot somebody could pull from it if they manage to not get so hung up on wanting to find issues or wanting to compare it to something else. Right. Because I notice that a lot between different key works is people try to use like a gold standard of key, which from my perspective, there's always something different from each and every keyword, every no matter how similar they might seem. gold standard of key. Yep. And right. I don't and think often because it's influenced by whichever your first work was. Yeah. Definitely the for case me, for me. Like, I had a very random start. So for me, yeah. I very quickly learned don't go in expecting Anything. a carbon copy of something else that you <laughs> love. Yeah. Just go Definitely. for a ride and try to be as open-hearted and empathetic as you can which i think that benefits for going into anything with that kind of mindset because I agree, he yeah. is something that is love and light in dark places full disclaimer well, you still don't have to like kami-sama in the end we really no, don't care. you don't just just give it a be try, civil about please. it be civil about it be civil about it and give it the time of day that's that's i and i think you know that's why i wanted to do this episode of key radio live is because a lot um a lot of people see the ratings and see the hate for it and they're like oh and like i actually no names here but one person said i'm glad i skipped it and i'm like mm, that mentality is what bugs me a little bit because I'll be honest, I by around episode six or seven, I'm I was like, okay, where are they going with this? And I was I was on the train of this is probably not going to be all that great. And then episodes nine and ten happened, and I was like, oh, I was so wrong about this. You know, I and I was fully on the support train for it at that point. I do think it is important to talk about because a lot of the reason why I've become more open to Kamisama criticism is the fact that Maeda is now doing far better. And in a sense, I will argue that Heaven Burns Red is sort of thematically doing what he wanted to do with Kamisama. In the sense that there is no guarantee that the future is positive for the characters of Heaven yeah. Burns Red, but they are still pushing forward to try. And I, I think sure. that is exactly what Kamisama was trying to do with Hina and Yoda. Just didn't have the time to really show that. Heaven so, Burns Red Red is giving Maida a lot more creative freedom. And, and I'm glad he for is that. Thriving. I really think he's thriving. It is my favorite Maida work so far. Like I, I am willing to put yeah. it on that tier now. I love it. Yeah. I've been pushing it as almost my top favorite key work in general. Yeah. I it's, haven't read it yet. <laughs> but I do say, what was said by the community, especially towards Hina and June, Maeda themselves, I think was reprehensible i don't think that I, people yeah. sh especially hina where she was at by the end there was no reason to be as mean as ke people were to her yeah like you can say how much you dislike the direction of the story don't attack hina or maida because one hina doesn't deserve it and honestly neither does maida he's a writer he didn't kill your mother <laughs> you can even dislike hina as she is for the majority of the anime, but to not acknowledge the disparity between her personality be between the two and to comprehend how significant that is for the people and characters who do care about her, that is where I think it is also just It's messed problematic. Up. I, I, because I that, that says that. kind of a bit about your personality 
in other aspects in life. And for me, that that's a big tell on a person's yeah. personality. Like, it's one thing to not really care about the story of Kami-sama. It's another thing to say, I don't understand how anyone could like this. This is absolutely horrible and unrealistic because, unfortunately, I hate to burst your bubble. Yeah, no, I'm in Yoda's shoes right now. And it's not fun, it's not easy, and it's a lot like Yoda. It's always two steps forward, one steps back. And guess what? That's okay. But yep. it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that we shouldn't write stories about it either. Like, in a sense, it's Key's most realistic take on declining quality of life. Because in a lot of cases with Key, the characters have a very quick decline, and then it, there's sort of a peace in that because they didn't get to suffer that long. Hina's and not that in, case. In my review, I did, I think I did point out that in that aspect, that is why I do agree that it could be perceived as one of the saddest keywords because that angle that it takes is very sad and there is no hope like definitive ending epilogue of hope that we're given that yeah. i think does veer it into the most sad territory and i think that yeah. is also why people had such a vis visceral distaste for it because they didn't get their cute little bow I would not argue that Kamisama is the saddest as much as it is. It is the most uncomfortable to watch. Because yeah. regardless and of how much you care or don't care for Hina, it is very hard to watch what happens. Yeah. And that's oh, not definitely. for everyone. It's not. No. Now, I do think you should still give it a chance because who knows? The story might speak to you. But I do understand, and this is where I sort of wanted it's to come really in on the episode. to the three of us, you know? I do understand where people might go, Kami-sama isn't for me, or even go, it's my least favorite keyword. Trust me, I get it. Mm -hmm. It's just... I, I don't want to say be more nuanced, but no, be nuanced about how you critique it. Because in the end, you cannot like it, but at the but at the same token, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. It is uncomfortable, but I think that's part of. I think that's part of. Part of what makes it what point. it is. It's it's part of its identity yeah. as a keyword. Yeah, exactly. And in a sense, it makes it stick out because it's very rare that there are keywords quite as uncomfortable to go through. Maybe. Maybe maybe moon, but that's uncomfortable for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I also think. Kami-sama is uncomfortable and a lot of people don't like watching it because it hits a certain nerve that many people end up knowing they have to face in their life that they just don't want to f talk about. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, oof, yeah, no, that hits a little bit too close to home because eventually we all have to be in Yoda's shoes. Yeah. And that's a hard it's, pill to it's swallow. A, uh, yeah. And... I don't know. We'll, we might have a follow up at some point, but I do want to end like this talk about Kami Sama with some love, you know, because it's. I gave it a nine out of 10. I, I also gave it a nine. Platy, what did you rate it? Uh, I think a 9.5. <laughs> okay. So we're all we're all mostly in agreement in spite of some different criticisms on it. But the biggest thing I want to say here is that it has done a lot of good, you know? And in spite of all of its issues, it tells a story that needs to be told but doesn't necessarily want to be heard. No one mm -hmm. wants to be reminded about how temporary our state of existence is. Exactly. But it's an important exploration and how we handle it. And if you don't take notes from how some people handle it, whether that be that they handled it wrong and you want to do better, or they handled it right and you want to implement that, that's still an important story to tell. Mm-hmm. Platy, any closing thoughts? I think it's important to also acknowledge that I don't think Kami-sama is just for entertainment. It's not there to fully entertain you. Yes, it can be entertaining, but there's a lot of underlying 
moments that you can take sentimentality from and just important lessons as well. That's key, baby. And yeah, <laughs> don't lose sight of that between the incongruencies of the places that you think it falls short. Just try to take it as it is and find a way to love it how you can. Yep. Well, All right. Good, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, going through going through some summer vacations. A uh, couple quick things. Next week, uh, Hammy and I, Hammy will be back. We're gonna debate Tomoyo after. And side note, finding an actual fan of Tomoyo after to invite onto the episode with me has been a real <laughs> challenge. So um, I'm glad you didn't invite me. I would slander it. <laughs> I know, I know. I, this is one of like maybe three episodes where I'm specifically not inviting you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a thing next week, and then after that, we'll be in Looper's Heaven because Looper's Book Club coming out uh, coming up in two weeks. So yeah, that's plans for the future. Thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.